Good morning, Grace Evangelical Church. Greetings from Bill and Brenda Robertson, located here in Silver Hill, Alabama. Thank you for joining the 9 o'clock devotion this morning, and thank you, Pastor Chris, for the opportunity to share. <clears throat> what a joy it was to have Pastor Chris and Pam here to minister to us for a couple of days. You are a very special church to Brenda and myself. And we thank you for allowing Chris and Pam to come down and visit with us. You know, it, it is good to have someone from Grace to come and visit to make sure we are representing Grace in a positive and biblical manner. I believe it was almost uh, four years ago to the date that uh, the last pastor from Grace came and checked on us. And uh, we appreciated that very much. You are a special church. While folks are joining us, uh, let me briefly let you know what is going on with us here. After we left Grace and moved to Chelsea, Alabama, I joined the Shelby County Law Enforcement Chaplains Association, where I volunteered as a chaplain for almost 10 years with the Sheriff's Department. After moving to Baldwin County in Southern Alabama, I am now with the Sheriff's Office here, as well as the Silver Hill Police Department. A little over two years ago, Brenda was diagnosed with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and given a prognosis of two to five years. The medication that she takes does not cure or halt the disease, but hopefully slows the process down. Her lung function has decreased to 30% and is on oxygen full time. She is in constant pain from the disease and the side effects from the medication. As most of you know, we have one son, Jeff. He and his wife, Debbie, and our youngest grandson live about 30 minutes away from us, so uh, we're blessed in that way. Um, our oldest grandson, uh, he and his wife live in uh, Hartsville, South Carolina, and, they, and we have two great-grandchildren. Uh, Mason, who is four, and Abby, who just turned two. Um, our granddaughter, Christy, she lives uh, in the area. She lives in Mobile. She uh, uh, also, um, she works at a coffee shop, which is her love. And uh, so it's, we're real close to uh, most of our family anyway and uh, we uh, we're looking forward to having Jacob and and Jana and the two great-grandchildren visit with us here in a, in a few days um, one of the things that we like about Baldwin County is the agriculture in this area Brent and I both grew up on farms and enjoy looking at all the crops that are growing pretty much year-round here uh, there's corn, there's beans, there's cotton, uh, peanuts, um, potatoes, cabbage, you name it. There's just a, a little of everything. Um, pecans are very plentiful here. A lot of pecan uh, farms, orchards, and uh, here in uh, this, uh, this area. Uh, growing up on a farm, I did not realize most of the agricultural applications relating to farming that were used until much later. In the New Testament, there are references to the farmer and his crops. Jesus used applications that his audience would understand and would have meaning. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus mentions, that, mentions four types of soils, each having different qualities <clears throat> that have an influence on whether the seed that is planted in that soil will grow or not. Jesus then explains to his disciples that the seed represents the word of God and the soil represents the person who hears the word and how they respond. Jesus also tells us that the seed must be placed in the ground where a transformation takes place in order for the seed to produce fruit and depending on the type of soil and the rainfall determines the yield at harvest. Soil condition played a significant role in the yield. My dad enjoyed farming, and I grew up before no-till became popular, so we plowed each field and prepared the soil for the seed differently than today. 
when it came time to plant the seeds in the ground, Dad would have me go over the plowed ground with a disc to break up the soil and level it out for the planter. If I would miss an area, or it did not suit him, he would have me go over it again. And yes, there were a couple of times that Dad would say, Bill, you didn't do a very good job. You need to go over it again. So I would. On each planter, there is an arm that's, that uh, extends out and makes a mark in the soil for you to use as a guide on your next pass through the field. This would allow you to keep your rows straight and evenly spaced throughout the field. <clears throat> Dad never took the time to use the marker, yet he had the straightest and the evenest rows of any farmer. I asked Dad, Dad, how do you make such straight rows without using the arm to mark the soil? And Dad said, the important thing is first to pick out a landmark at the other end of the field and make that your goal. The next thing he said is to keep your eyes focused on that goal. He said, if you take your eyes off that goal at the other end of the field and look back, you will not have a straight line. Paul mentions in Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14, he says, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This application applies in all areas of our lives. We seem to get in trouble when we take our eyes off the goal. Paul again instructs us in Colossians 3.2, he says, Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Make sure you are focused on the right things and don't make your, take your eyes off of that goal. In Philippians 4, verse 8, Paul says, He gives us some things to focus on, things that are true, things that are noble, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things of a good report. So focus on those things today and uh, keep your mind focused on those and, and uh, just shut out the rest of the world. Set those things as your goal today. Um, let me pray for you and then I'll turn it back over to Chris. Father, we thank you so much for Grace Evangelical Church. Thank you for, the, for what they, uh, they mean to Brenda and myself and uh, what a blessing they have been, especially during this time of COVID that uh, we have uh, watched almost every service and, and uh, we certainly appreciate that uh, avenue of, uh, of church and, and uh, we just thank you so much for them. Father, I pray you be with uh, the pastors and their, and, uh, their families, be with the staff there at Grace. Bless them in special ways. Minister to them. Watch over and protect them. And Father, we lift up the church to you there. Pray that they would be a, a light on that hill and salt in the community. Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much. <coughs>